Hello everyone, welcome to the Red Men TV. I'm Steve. This is Edel over at the board. We've got Dan Club. It is the uncensored match build up ahead of Liverpool versus Atalanta, the Europa League quarter final first leg. We're expecting the Liverpool team news at some point. Like sometimes they do it early, sometimes they don't. So we're keeping an eye out. And we've decided to start the stream early just in case because we don't want to be caught short. Um Edel, it's, it's a it's a it's a move away from the the grind of the Premier League and and uh, we were speaking about off air the the relentless nature that the Premier League stand the standards being set by all three teams at the top of the league the Europa League's a, li a different change of pace it's a two legged tie all that kind of stuff so I don't know it feels like I I'm quite looking forward to this one in that it feels a little bit less stressful it's still a big game mm. it's European quarter final don't get me wrong but. It does feel like this is one that we might be able to enjoy a little bit more, I don't know. I'm open to be able to enjoy yeah, it a little yeah, yeah. bit more. Like let, let's be honest, I think the the games that we've we've had every every game it's felt like a cup final and understandably so but it's nice in a way that we can mix it up and we can get away from Premier League form and try and find form as a squad as a team in another competition where we are probably still strong favourites for the competition but again the opposition that we're going to come up against are going to cause us problems and challenges in their own in their own way so we're still going to have to unpack that and, and find answers all over the pitch tonight but again I think the level that we'll be able to bring in again I think if I'm right in saying if we were to make it through into the semis, there's only this and another home European game left for Jurgen Klopp. Yep. So in terms could of... Could be the last. Like if they, well, yeah, yeah. yeah. Be, you know, if, if Atlanta, you know, was the best us, then yeah, it, it could be last. So it, there's something in that for me where we've got to make this as much as... It, it's almost got to feel like Dortmund you know that Dortmund game in the Europa League where it was, it was the day on love from coming in with the 4-3 the to win it at the end like it's kind of got to feel like that ruckus of an atmosphere in order for 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 us to really just have that feel good factor again I think there is something to be said about having that distraction midweek away from the from the Premier League because whatever's happened the weekend before it's an opportunity again to kind of put things right in some sense or to continue the momentum and I know we didn't lose on the weekend but it wouldn't have been the result we would have wanted so here is another opportunity now for these lads to, to fine tune if few yep. things because I think definitely there's some areas not necessarily to cause concern but there's definitely areas where Liverpool need improvements and we haven't got many opportunities to gauge those improvements so this type of game right now is is, is, is a bit of a luxury if I'm being honest with you absolutely mate absolutely right then Liverpool's team news is out let's head on over don't worry about me Joe I'll head on over straight to Dan Dan's got his sauce. it's a it's a it's a, it's a, a, a change Liverpool team with a very strong Liverpool bench Dan oh the bench I'm just buzzing about the bench <laughs> not often you come to me and the bench is what's casting my eye but honestly I'm made up to see some of them lads back but let's go through it in proper order then Keevan Keller in goal of course Joe Gomez at right back Ibu Canate alongside him making a, a rare start these days for Ibu actually uh, Virgil van Dijk partnering him centre half um, Kostas Timakas another rare start to be honest with you he hasn't played footy for a few weeks it feels like but he's back in Pataro Endo at the base of midfield the banging form Alexis McAllister of course pulling all the strings in there Curtis Jones is probably his first start back since his injury as well I'd imagine um, Harvey Elliott right wing which is an interesting call we'll discuss that in more detail I'm sure Darwin Nunes leading the line and Cody Gakpo this is a strange one to me. I'm made up, by the way, Cody Gakpo. He's been really good in cup competitions, including the Europa League, so I am pleased. But not often he starts games, as we've seen so much of Luis Diaz recently. That could have something to do with it. Bench. Now, bear with me as the big old bench. I think I've got everyone. Adrian, Ryan Gravenberch, Mo Salah, Luis Diaz, Andy Robertson, Connor Bradley, Bobby Clark, Dom Sabozlai, Joel Quanser. And the three headline acts are Diogo Jota, Trent Alexander-Arnold, Stefan Pachetic, everyone. You lie. Absolutely fantastic news. Yeah, what we were told that Stephen, the plan was Stefan Bertetic to get some minutes for the under 21s tomorrow. Uh, may, and that might still be the case. He might not be involved in, on the, in the game at all today, but maybe Jürgen's obviously getting him back on the bench, getting him involved. It's a very strong Liverpool bench. Errol, obviously, he's made changes as well. But yeah, we, before we even start talking about the team, the fact that Jota and Trent in particular, you know, are back already, and Stefan Bertetic, not, we're not too far away from the return of Alisson as well. It feels like quite a significant step here. I wonder what if the, if the plan is to get them some minutes, a few of them. Hopefully it is. But yeah, it, it's been a while since Liverpool had this many options to choose from. Oh. It's, it's a very good team. It's a very good. It's a very good bench. It's a rarity, isn't it? and it, it feels, it feels like it's a, not necessarily a bit of a ploy by Klopp, but it, it might be just one of those kind of care and raising moments where he realises I need as many people as possible to feel like it's still very much doable on all fronts and in order to do that 
even if they just seeing the lads, we see the clips of them in training, everybody gets excited. But if people see the lads in the ground, they see that they're fit, they see that they're available to play for us, people will believe that when we need to go full tilt, we've got the tools to do so. And I think that is it's quite smart on his part, really, to kind of show his hand. Not, ne- not necessarily so much to the opposition, but more to the fans yeah, as well it's, as yeah, the it's supporters. A bit of, it's a bit of a boost, massive, then. Yeah, a bit of a boost. And like I say, I always think if they get on the bench then get a couple of games, does, does that mean they're, they may be available to start on Sunday? We'll cross the bridge when we get to it, yeah. Dan. Yeah. The question I've got for you um, and I, anyone who watched the match preview show with Chloe, Peter and, and Leah Peter, uh, Peter made a good point actually it feels like Liverpool have got their centre-backs in a cycle of midweek weekend midweek weekend but Ibu Kanate feels like the midweek midfield centre-back and, and Gerald Kwanzaa feels like the weekend centre-back that's what's been happening recently like that's the wrong way around for me. Like I, I, I like Gerald Kwanzaa. I think he's brilliant. Don't get me wrong. I've been, I, but Ibu Kanate is Liverpool's second best centre back in my opinion, yeah. especially with Joel Matip out. I don't know. It feels like we've got that wrong, the wrong way around. Like I, I thought these would be the games that Jarrell should play, and then that Kanate will be playing at Old Trafford. Kanate will be playing against Crystal Palace at the weekend. Because look, by the looks of this, if Kanate can only play one game a week, he isn't going to play on Sunday now. Mm. I, I, what you, what your uh, assessments of the centre back options there because listen I love both of them Don't yeah. I love, I've got no issues with both of them but I do believe that Jürgen I don't know something's happened here where I, it feels like it's the wrong way around to me No I can't disagree with you mate to be honest with you um, it feels quite strange I can only imagine I can only draw the conclusion that it's fitness related. I mean, this is a team tonight, really, that's been chosen in conjunction with the sports science staff, with the fitness team as well, because I think there's a couple on there probably in need of some minutes. The subs might play into that as well as the night goes on. We might see some 60-30s going on. But yeah, in terms of sense of halves, it's hard to really sort of put my finger on it. I think Ibu Kanate is most definitely our second best centre back. I think even potentially with the fitness of Joel Matip, his his ability and what he can bring to the to any game, any situation is absolutely levels above most in world football. To be honest with you, it is just a fitness thing with him. It does feel like we're constantly having to manage to keep one eye on his minutes because we don't want to get injured and all that sort of stuff. So it's odd and it's strange that he is chosen for midweek for me because, as you say, not. Starting him at Old Trafford while he's on the bench, that feels removed from what should be happening as well. Javel Quanta, as you mentioned, has been absolutely outstanding this season. I think the sky is particularly the limit for him as well. He's a really talented footballer, but Ibu Kanate, Ibu Kanate, like if we get the best out of Ibu Kanate for any long period of time alongside Virgil Van Dijk, that feels like the most <coughs> solid partnership possible. And it feels like if sort of Quanta and maybe a bit of Joe Gomez can drop in and out of that, great. But he should be the main guy alongside this other main guy here. So. To not have that and not be able to do that regularly is a big blow to Liverpool's chances in any season, not just this season. So I think we need to really nail down and put our finger on what it is with Ibu Kanate. How do we get him playing the most football possible? And if it is 60 minutes in midweek here and there, then so be it. Because as you say there, I would like to see Ibu Kanate play an hour tonight and then start the weekend. But that doesn't feel like that's going to be the case. It does feel like it'd be Quanta. So we haven't quite cracked the code yet with Ibu. Maybe they're trying to... We've seen him do this with Joel Matip as well at one point because he kept picking up regular injuries. We've seen him completely change the approach to how we use him. Maybe we're trying that with Ibu Canate now. But it is a very tricky one to, to work out. Uh, what, do you, what do you make of it? Um, I'd be pissed off if I was Ibu. I'm not... Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's his own fault. Yeah, but it is. It is his own... It, to an extent, yeah, it is his own fault. But it's again, it's like it's his body letting him die. Yeah. I don't think it's a, a, a personal choice. But you've then got to weigh up the where where am I best suited to get in my game time? Am I best suited to get in my game time in the in in the midweek? And again, there's no dead rubber games for us at this nope. season, so everything's got it's got something resting on it. Stakes on it. Yeah, the yeah. stakes the stakes yeah. are there. But ultimately. As we're going towards these last seven, whatever many games in the Premier League, you need that partnership to be to be nailed on. It can't just be, you know, Jarrell Quanta for another two games and then the last five, Ibu's fit enough, so we'll we'll use it. No, I've got to feel like you're gonna rely on me. Yeah. And uh, who, who was it? Was it it used to be Daniel Sturridge back in the day when uh, Klopp first came and you know, he's like, doesn't want to play through pain. Mm doesn't really want to play if you're playing. So I'm not going to play yet. There's the talent and there's the ability. And at the time, you were still probably one of our best forwards, but you don't want to play through pain for me. So I'm, I'm yeah. going to leave you there. It all feels a little bit similar in that sense that like, will Ibu play through that pain barrier? And has Ibu got the ball to turn around to come and say, I'm willing to... I'm willing to break myself down before the Euros this season to see whatever it is over the line mm. in defence for you. And I'll do it. But I don't know whether that conversation's been had or it is just safeguarding him for the bigger picture and I'm like I can't see past the bigger picture right now because Klopp's going Mm. Klopp has made this whole picture so as far as I'm concerned you're here to do a job for my man 
do the job and be fit when he needs you. And if he only needs you in the Europa League, something's gone wrong. Yeah, is, yeah. Is, that's how I see it. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to get listen. Jürgen's making his decisions, and he's he's more entitled to do it because he's, he's the absolute man. Um, Dan, I'll come back to you. It, you mentioned before Costas hasn't played for a while. I I I thought he was nailed on to play this one. If I'm honest with you, given that they're looking after Bradley, they're looking after Robertson. I always presume Costas will play. And actually, I I think he's he's. He's been half unlucky, really. And I actually thought he was playing really well. And then Saka done his shoulder against Arsenal, didn't he? In that in that game with a pretty reckless challenge, really, when he when he launched them. And then since then, because of the former Joe Gomez and and then obviously Andy Robertson was back. Cost that's found it difficult. But actually, he's probably in terms of performance level having his most consistent season, season for Liverpool. Other than the fact that now he's found himself being unable to get himself in the team, but it's a big opportunity for him because I I extend. I think he's been half unlucky really, just given the form and the injuries look that he's had. Yeah, I think I agree with you. I think he's been really good this season when he has been called upon and, and for large parts of the Liverpool career actually I don't think he's ever particularly let anybody down. It's just he's often found himself down the pecking order, usually just behind one player and Andy Robertson of course. It just so happens that you mentioned the form of Joe Gomez. He's been behind a couple in recent weeks and it has felt quite strange to me and I've often had this sort of wrestle with my own sort of thoughts on Costa Simicat. I think he's a really good left back and I think he's a really solid option in terms of attacking and defensively a set piece delivery is second to none in my opinion but when you are third in the pecking order behind somebody who isn't actually a left back in the shape of Joe Gomez you do start to wonder okay where does your future lie here where are you going to get your minutes from and stuff like that because as I mentioned I don't think he's played like three or four weeks before tonight he's been fit that whole time and Gomez has been getting ahead of him and Andy Robertson so he's one who's desperately needed minutes and we referenced it earlier on I think Klopp is getting the lads back together now for this final, final push for the rest of the season and whatever way you need to go about getting minutes into legs to get yourself ready for this final push that's what this lineup says to me and that's why I actually think Ibu's inclusion is just with an eye to doing that to getting the best version of Ibu Canate for the remaining weeks getting him an hour tonight maybe something like that and Simicast falls into the same category but yeah I agree with you I think form wise he's more than warranted more minutes at times this season it's just difficult when Robertson's there and obviously Joe Gomez is there as well so you said it looks like an opportunity for him I struggle with that because I think it doesn't really matter how well he plays tonight he doesn't play again potentially this season it wouldn't shock me whatsoever this is the last game he started his best chance to start another game of footy for Liverpool is either an injury which hopefully doesn't happen or it's getting the job done tonight and winning 3 or 4 nil, and then he might start the second leg as well other than that I don't see him starting for the Veds again yeah, absolutely. Well, I hope he has a good game because I think I said I've been very impressed with him um, good to end up back it's worth mentioning that the last one I want to speak to you on Ella very quickly is, um, is Harvey Elliott I think no one would begrudge Harvey Elliott to yeah, start no. but once again he's, he's almost doing the donkey work like he, yeah. is, he, he isn't I mean he was a right winger but I'm not sure he's a right winger for Liverpool Anymore, he's not. but yet again like, I, I, I absolutely I think he, he's absolutely got every right to start this game. He should be starting this game. Liverpool have obviously chose to rest Mo Salah. We'll, we'll touch up on that in a moment as well. But, I mean, Harvey, he mentioned the press conference just the I just want to start playing. I'm happy with what I'm doing, but I want to start starting. Yeah. But it does feel like he's, again, he's, he's being shifted out of his natural position. Now, listen, don't be wrong. Alexis McAllister has been probably Liverpool's best player in the last probably two months. Curtis Jones just come back from injury as well. But, yeah, at some point it feels like... Does Harvey deserve to start in the role that he's been coming on and doing such a good job in? Or is this um, is this just the nature of the beast? This is part of the nature of the beast, if I'll be honest with you. I think maybe the, the point that Dan was making there about Simakas, maybe the fact that he will give us that natural whip on that left-hand side allows Joe Gomez to invert a little bit, which then kind of gives Harvey a little bit more operating space on that right-hand side. So he can then drift from the touchline in, make out, out to in runs as well as kind of occupy a little bit of a free roll um, because we know Gakpo I feel like Gakpo and Nunes will both kind of just move they'll interchange a lot they'll interchange a lot and just move kind of centrally Curtis Jones will offer a little bit of whiff on that left hand side so I feel like where in recent weeks it's been Bradley down that right hand side and Joe Gomez inverting on the as from a left back's perspective and we've been kind of narrow on the left I feel like it'll be swayed the other way we'll be more narrow on the right hand side but we'll get that width coming from the left, which then means Harvey won't necessarily be the right winger winger because he'll probably play more in the half space between yeah. out wide and infield a little bit as a 10. Potentially, I could be completely wrong, but I think that the... the if the fact for me is he deserves to start and there isn't anybody else really equipped in our you know in our setup I don't even think Jota even when he has been fit has played particularly well on that right hand side to really come in and lace Mohamed Salah's boots unfortunately for us right now Mohamed Salah's not in form 
No. He's not like he, he's getting goals because he's an output merchant and he loves his output. Mm. He'll always get goals. But in terms of what he's offering all around team at the moment, it's not been at his best. And I think if you asked him in a really honest way, he'd probably give you an honest answer to that. I don't know if that's because of the injury that he picked up in AFCON and it's just taken him a little bit longer than anticipated to get back up to fitness. But you can't knock what Harvey Elliott's been bringing to the team, what he's offered the team, the work rate, the the intensity that he that he's brought in, the desire and the hunger to to create more than anything else. Like that's one of the things I've been so impressed by. Like he wants to make shit happen, and I think we haven't got enough lads as forward options that unless shit's happening for them, they're not actively going out of the way, breaking the back, you know, bending over backwards to make things happen, where that is something that Harvey Elliott kind of thrives off. And, he, you know, I think a lot of his good performances have come off the back of making either assists or the pass before the assist or whatever it might be. I think we do need a little bit of that being injected into our front line at the minute. You, you, you touched on Salah there as well. To, to move on away from Elliott, obviously the, per, the person he's replacing it is it's Mo Salah. Salah. Um, it's very rare Mo Salah gets rested. I wonder if this is an insight into the, I mean, a lot of people have been talking about Mo Salah's form and while he has scored a lot of goals, I think it's fair to say since the injury hasn't been anywhere near his levels. The, uh, his levels. But I do wonder the fact that he isn't playing today, I don't think Mo Salah's been dropped. I think he has. I, 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 no, do you know why I think he has though? And I, I, like, this is like my, my 30 time. On, on, on. You, you do your theory because I'm going to do mine. <laughs> I, oh, go on, go on. No, you go, you go, you go first. My I'll theory, decide. My, right. theory, my theory is when Liverpool have been great, Salah, Salah's, Salah's been great, and Klopp hasn't had any real justification to take him out of the firing line because we're doing well and he's been doing well as an individual. I think it got to a point where last season, because Liverpool weren't in a great shape, you was the talisman. So even though we weren't great, you was probably the standout player in that attack line. So I can't really take you out of the firing line in any real way. I think since Klopp's announced that he's going, it's like everything's merit-based now. Mm. You're only getting in this team if you're doing the business. And ultimately <clears throat> at this moment in time, for your level, you're not doing the business. So when he substituted him the other week and he came off in a strop, uh, Salah, I was like, maybe Klopp just thinks, well, same way he's been with reporters and, and mm. Janos, I don't care Doesn't anymore. need the long-term relationship I don't need, anymore. Yeah, that yeah, long-term relationship. I don't need to protect in the same way I did yeah. 12 months ago yeah. because it was more up in the air. I didn't know what was going to happen. Because he doesn't need Salah next season because he's not going to be here Because he's not going to be here. So yeah. you're not surplus to requirements in any way, shape or form and you are vital and he doesn't need Salah to perform. But ultimately, if you aren't performing, I can look to the bench and see if someone else will grab yeah. will grab an opportunity and take the shares. And I think Klopp's well within his rights to do that. He's been so loyal. We always, because it's like, Klopp's loyal, he's too loyal to this. He's, no, cops being ruthless. About time. <laughs> I see. My theory is, I don't think he's fit. I mean, that, 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 that's my that. th that's my theory. In that, I bet. Yeah, we we listen. I can't say this, but we, we've all we've all been told stories. Sometimes, like off of having Liverpool players who were dealing with a little niggle, or yeah, yeah. They, they, you know, they, they tell you like six months exactly that you know I was playing for, I was getting injections or yeah. something there. The fact that Salah isn't playing a European quarter final to me suggests he's managing something. A little bit like the same as Canate. The fact that Canate is not playing every week, mm. he's obviously dealing with something yeah. and they're just trying to keep it under wraps. I think that that's a more logical explanation to me than, than most others just got a bit crap. Yeah, I'm a, you, 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 I'm a conspiracy theorist. What can I say? No, no, okay, I, I get both. But like, the fact there's no, you don't rest most. He's never no, been rested. Salah rest never got rested. But he never used to get subbed either. No, so no. For, for yeah, Klopp to turn yeah, yeah. around and be happy enough to say, especially in the game we needed to win. What game was it? It was only... Well, we just like, conceded. Yeah, yeah, we just, United. Just, yeah, we, it was off. He, must, yeah. he mustn't be fit. But it was already planned. It was bang on the hour mark, wasn't yeah, it? It was bang on the hour mark. You're going to be coming off regardless. And we just went behind. I'm looking at my man thinking, nah, you're staying on the pitch yeah, yeah, yeah. you need to go get me a goal but well, he still the, took him off and then it was Harvey that came in yeah. and done something well, yeah. Harvey looked confused on the touchline by that because he looked annoyed that we'd gone 1-1 one, one, by the way but he also, yeah he's going to change things now the timing of that and I get both arguments in equal measure by the way I think they both got merit but the timing of it and the fact that it happened regardless of game situation suggests that it is a fitness thing as opposed to anything else we are managing something because you're right if it was just form that's Mohamed Salah yeah, you go 1-1 yeah. one, one, you say we need to change plans quickly all of a sudden John Achterberg is getting the board off the fourth official and things are changing yeah, the fact yeah. Still goes ahead, suggests that it's a sports science club as opposed to anything else, and okay, okay. I, it's a, it's a shame. And listen, I don't think he is in good form, being interested in imagination because he simply isn't. And what what getting a <laughs> Mohamed Salah back to his peak means to this Liverpool side, regardless of form right now, is invaluable for this running. So whatever means necessary to get him there, is the same what I said about Ibu Kanate, similar with Costa Simicas, the rest of these lads, the bench as well, whatever minutes these need between now and sort of the end of next week or the week after, whatever it may be, 
I'm fine with it. But you are right in terms of it does feel like the gloves are off a little bit for Klopp now mm. because he doesn't need that long term. And I'm not going to need him in six, seven weeks' time. But whatever, the hearing now is all that matters. Yeah. And I quite like that. That's quite a, an exciting prospect for me. But yeah, listen, um, Salah on the bench is boss, by the way. I think he's been like that with the Janos as well. He's he's been yeah, a little he, bit he, look, he, he looks like, 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 like the fellow who's under his noticing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he still wants. We've all been there. Yeah, we've, we've all, we've all been there. He gave a press conference the other day to some fans going around the AXA. Yeah. If he did that six months ago, people would have been like, that to be, yeah, or he would have had a little telling off and something. Yeah, a little bit of Okay. Okay. They, they need that, yeah. the, the, the Netherlands guy yeah, a little bit of going in for him. Uh, the Henderson thing like Jürgen's so, so this is what I'm saying he's now finally just he feels unhinged unhinged <laughs> and ain't no I, I'll, I'll feel no way I'm going to tell you how I feel and I'm going to pick the team that I want to pick and I'm going to pick the players that are going to play for me and if, if you're not or if I don't think you're applying yourself in the way I expect then I feel no way to take you out because there are other lads that will come in and step up or at least attempt to step up and I'm fine with that but he's never going to vote in this moment and say that's what it is. But I just wouldn't be shocked. I really I'm hoping we get to speak to him before he leaves. And he, we'll, we'll ask him all these questions off there. <laughs> <laughs> Once he's left, he'll be able to tell us anything. We'll get the I'm, scoop. Yeah, oh, yeah we'll try and get the we'll scoop. Yeah, but, um, I'm, I'll, do, I'll do what I can for that one. Um, just to let you guys know, obviously, the watch along me and Ella will be live from quarter to the hour for the watch along. So, yeah, just give that head to us as well. We've got. Um, I'm looking forward to it, actually, like I said, the top of the show, it's going to be a really fun one. It's a very wet Anfield, just looking at the, the pitches there with Peter Crouch with that umbrella. I mean, is that girl even getting covered by that, but Ollie, considering how tall Peter is, I don't no, know. but um, probably not. It is. It, what I would say is it's Liverpool at home in Europe, and, and hopefully it's not. But like, the, there is a, a slim possibility this is Jürgen's last European home game. We're all hopeful it definitely isn't, because yeah. that means something's going to go horribly wrong. I do wonder what the game plan is. Like I say, he's got such a strong bench, he can use five subs. We, we've said this a million times before, and it, it never, ever works out this way, but I do wonder if he's going to go, right, give him, lads, give me loads for an hour, and then I've got five lads who I can bring on. Because yeah. if you ask, he would be desperate to get three. You know, like the, the Sparta Prague game where it's game, it's done, yeah. and the second leg's almost a formality. Going away to, to Italy next Thursday, just before a, a big, a, an away trip to Fulham, is that Fulham, right? Fulham. Fulham yeah. You know, we, of course, there's problems this season. Yeah. We played them and three last times. Season, and yeah, but well, listen, we, 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 we played didn't them three times. We beat three. them a day off last season. We drew them. This the season, we, you know, we, we had the 4 3, we had the, 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 the 2 1 in the cup, we had the, we got the, the draw down at their place. In, in the in the second leg as well it's been difficult against Fulham I do wonder if Jürgen's gone right and now I'm going to bring the big guns on I've got Salah, Sabozlai, Jota, Trent bang 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 and is his game plan just to try and blow Atalanta out the water in this first leg I don't, I don't blame him it should be I we, we, we should be looking to do that because the one thing that whether we like it or not that is our one advantage above City and Arsenal this season this competition at this stage when they're in that competition at the same stage facing Real Madrid and Bayern Munich they can't get their job done against those and that's getting no slant to City or, or Arsenal they are playing unbelievable teams in, in Real and, and Bayern but in respect to Atlanta we're in the Europa League and we're playing them and for the last what eight nine months we've been one of the best two two to five teams in the world could play anybody on the day and give them a game so as far as i'm concerned this is the opportunity to blow a team away because even in the prem now we can't blow teams away you know the, the level of the prem how tight it is and i think it's probably because of the stakes and the, you don't want to make the mistake but we can't blow a team away in the prem right now we, you couldn't pay us to blow a team away so right now this is the only opportunity where we can do that but in doing that job it then alleviates the pressure, as you say, going into next week, which then means people are rested for the, the Sunday game. The knock-on effect or the domino effect by being able to blow away in Atlanta by going full tilt for 60 minutes, the payoff is massive. Yeah. And the risk is a small risk because, in theory, you've still got another 120 minutes. If you don't blast them in 60, you've still got another 120 minutes to get the job done in a week's time almost, yeah. and then with the, obviously the, the remaining 30 of, of this game. So... I think that is a smart move from Klopp there, really, to try and really take it to the gauntlet and just go for the throat. Absolutely. But we've not been clinical, so... Well, we'll that, see how... on that, and there's, there's the last one, do us let us know, guys, as well, because as we start wrapping, I've got one more question for Dan before I get to score predictions of the lads and you guys. So, yeah, use the live chat, use the Discord, let us know your score predictions and how you've seen the team news. Dan, um, Errol mentioned they had a lack of ruthlessness, a lack, mm. lack of clinical nature in front of goal. There's a fella on that source bench behind you who we've all wished has been fit. Like, it's massive that Diogo Jota's back. Like, he is, 
you know, you talk about gun gunmen killers, that killer instinct in front of goal. That's that it. is Diogo Jota. Like that's, that's his blueprint. That that is that is Jota. He yeah. scored at against these last time. You know, in yeah. the at the gaff, didn't he? A couple of years ago, obviously, um, when he first arrived, mm. obviously it was behind closed doors, but. It, it, it feels huge that Jota's getting himself back fit and available now because Liverpool have missed him in some pretty big games. I I propose to you if Jota had been fit, Liverpool would still be in the FA Cup and he would probably would have won at the weekend as well. Yeah, quite possibly, given obviously his ruthless nature, as you mentioned, there, that killer instinct he has in front of the goal. But for me, actually, with Jota, it's not so much sort of the volume of goals he scores. That's good, don't get me wrong. And obviously, it's more the um, it's more the magnitude, the importance of the goals that he scores. It feels like when Liverpool need a goal, how often is it Diogo Jota? Like Mohamed Salah, as you mentioned earlier, is an absolute output merchant. He's been there since day one at Liverpool Football Club. But more recently, it feels like when Liverpool really need someone to to step up Joss is the guy to do it and I think you're right I think in terms of sending for the cavalry it doesn't really get much better than getting Diogo Jota back fit and firing because having him up and running between now and the end of the season is going to be imperative to our chances of winning silverware full stop let alone Premier League or Europa League whatever we do between now and the end I think having Jota in the round is going to be massively massively important so yeah made up seeing back likewise with Trent likewise with Stefan Pagetti I think if we get a glimpse of him tonight I'll also be absolutely delighted because we've got a real talent on our hands there we just haven't been able to witness this season whatsoever but yeah listen I think if a game ever calls for a goal or ever calls for a moment how often is it Joe Goodjoss like I say and hopefully tonight doesn't I, I agree with you lads a moment ago in terms of coming out flying out the box trying to get this job done as quickly as possible I will say though this isn't a lineup that suggests that's necessarily going to be our approach mm. or the way we go about it I like the lineup. don't get me wrong but it's not full strength, is it? A lot of the strength lies on the bench, so it does feel like we are just See, managing it, our way through the tie a little bit. It feels but... to me, Dan, on that, it feels to me, he'll say, give it an hour and then the big guns come on. So we, like, so that you don't have to worry about resting players on Sunday because you'll say, actually no one, you know... Everyone's fresh. Every, everyone goes, yeah. I've got five subs, so the chances are Gakpo, Nunes and Elliot all come off at yeah. some point and then two of McAllister, Jones or maybe the full-backs come off at some point as well. I think Jones will have to. Yeah, he's not going to play, 90, he should yeah. be unlikely to play 90, so I, I do believe, like, I think Jäger might be looking at that, like, as, especially as a way of going right. We can imagine doing an hour against that, and then next week you look at the bench, and there comes Salah, there comes yeah, Jota, yeah, yeah. there comes Diaz, there uh, comes Sabal. Like, like, my goodness gracious me! Um, I asked for some score predictions. I'll get yours in a moment. Just very, very quickly, I'll run through the Atalanta team. It's Musso in goal, a back four of Ruggeri, Hein, Jimmy, Jim Stiti, whose name I used to really struggle with, and Zappa Costa. I know Zappa Costa. Um, Pasolic, Derun, and Ederson, and then Coop Miner is probably their star man at the moment. I would say, although Skamak is probably in good form as well, so maybe him up front uh, with Di Ketelare as well. They've got um, they've got Luckman on the bench. You know, I'm, I'm, that was uh, mad. The BT graphic just there up there just had Zappa Costa up. Front. I was thinking he's not a shite. Yeah, they've got yeah, that wrong. They got that wrong. Back, he? He's definitely a right back. Yeah, yeah, I was yeah. thinking. I was like, "Oi!" Bomb and wing. I didn't smack yeah. it. Wasn't he the West Ham kid? Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. For one season, for one season, yeah. One season, Charles one de Ketelaar is a good player, by the way. Belgian lad. Yeah. Yeah. He's a very good player. Yeah, and Kupman is a good player as well. They have got a couple. Listen, they're not a bad team. They're in the quarterfinals. They're, yeah. they're no mugs That's as what well. Respect on the name, like you got to. Absolutely. So right then, I did ask for some score predictions. I'll read some of yours. I want the lads have a think. Rav is going for a two-one. Diane, regular of the watch alongs and one of our members. Hope you well, Diane. Is going for a 3 0, as is Thomas. Na as is Natty as well. CFM is going for a 3 1. Pat's going for a 3 0 as well. Clive is going for a 4 1 with Salah coming off the bench. Retro on limb. Hello, Dan. Is going for a 5 1. One, yeah, low Steve Ryder. Shout out to Steve. Hope you're doing well in Rex and my mate. Five yes. nil as well. Some some big score lines here. The Reds in the chat are confident. I've got a six from Darren. Oof. I've got Savi Sferia who's going for a five one as well. Like, there's I wish I had your confidence. You know, I want to be like you. So, uh, 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 there, well, there you go. Errol tipped his hand. I'll let you go first. Um, until my man said, until my man said Salah coming on and scoring a late one, I was just going to go for two nil. But with Salah coming on to score a late one, and Jota coming on to score a late one, hmm. you've got, you've got, you've got, you've got to add two. You've got to add two because I'm not scoring. I'm now I'm still going to stick two nil, two nil Liverpool. Ooh. I'm not going to, I'm not going to waver now. Fair enough, Dan. I was going to say three nil, and then somebody says Salah's going to come on and score a late one, <laughs> so it changed my mind genuinely, and I'm going to go. I'm going to go four one. I think. A lot of people are looking at this Italian thing and going, oh, they're going to shut up shop. They won't Dude, decide, don't do that. that. <laughs> that team, no, no, does team. not do that. Yeah, the sixth in Serie A, they're a decent side. They've made us the Europa League quarterfinals, but they're going to come here to play, and I think that suits us down to the ground. So 4-1, Gakpo, Nunes twice, Salah. 
do you think it's a shit thing that there's no longer like the away goal? Away goal because there's like there's less incentive for them to like, kind of really give it a go in this leg. Away goals like, in the Champions League would have been interesting this week. This week, though, week like, I would say that. Uh, I was going to say if any if the Champions League getting to go by. No, because teams are scoring. You know I mean? Yeah, yeah, true, like, true. Man City have just gone and scored three at the bear about. Oh, you know, Bayern have scored two at the Emirates. You've seen, you know, Barcelona, Barcelona go to Barcelona, Paris Barcelona. and score three. Like, yeah, so I don't yeah. think it, you know, even even Dortmund scored in that in fucking in that letter goal. No, one's, go for and no one scores there. So yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe I don't know if there's what the what the uh, the thinking is, but you are right. It, it's certainly it's less incentive for them to do it. Doesn't it doesn't feel like that's happened but on I, the Champions But League. I almost feel like it comes in, in this competition because it can be a little bit more topsy turvy. If you was to go two 0 down, say you don't want to then go for it because there's no. not the incentive to get that extra yeah. goal, do you know what I mean? So yeah. it is more like, I'm yeah. gonna sh- we're not going to embarrass ourselves and be out of it by the hour mark almost from his, yeah. from the opposition. I, think, yeah, it, it, I, I, I was never in favour of the way. I didn't like away goals, so I was all like, I know a lot of people disagree with it, I wasn't a fan. I thought I just thought it was mad that a goal in one stadium counted for more than a goal. It made no... It baffled me, a goal's a goal. But, but change your shit. <laughs> Change your shit. I grew up away goals. Yeah, I grew away goals. I grew up I remember. I remember footy like. Loads of loads of things. You've got five subs now. Yeah. I'm sorry. I was like, you couldn't. The goalie should pick the ball up and the, like. The thing, I, thing, thing, no I was <laughs> never an away goal. I never liked the away goal. But I, I agree. It, it definitely added jeopardy. more jeopardy yeah, to the game, yeah, yeah, and, and it was drama, an inter- It was. A, it, it made European football different than like a two-legged domestic. I understand mm. it, but I, I always thought like if you score a goal, you score a goal. It doesn't matter which stadium you score. It's a goal's that big and that and the ball's that big. Like it doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah. But I do see your point. I think it was meant to stop teams going away and shutting up shop. But actually, they've got rid of it. And, and, everyone's, and, and everyone's, yeah. everyone's going yeah. for it. So I, I don't know if it makes it, um, Hopefully a huge do. difference. Anyway, right then, I'm going to give my score prediction. I've realised I, I didn't give mine. So you went 2-0, Dan went 4-1. I'm going to half split the difference. I think 3-1. Three, one. Three, one. I think 3-1. I think it's, I think it's going to be one all, and then Jotun and Salah are both going to come off the bench and score. <laughs> That is my prediction for this one. Like I said before, guys, do come and join us for the watch along. We'll be live at quarter to the hour. So you've got about half an hour to go and get yourselves ready. Go and get some food, get a drink, get yourselves all set up. We'll be live. Kickoff's eight o'clock, but we'll be live with the watch along from quarter two. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching, commenting, getting in the chat as well. Thanks to Dan. Thanks to Errol. Thanks to Joe producing the show as usual on the old ones and twos. And yet we'll see you in half an hour's time. See you Hey, thank you so much for checking out the content today. If you want to get your name in and amongst these wonderful people, uh, then head to redmenplus.com. Join as a legend tier subscriber. You're going to get free merchandise, merchandise codes. You're going to get in our Discord, and you're going to get your name at the end of YouTube videos. Yes, redmenplus.com, legend tier status.